Thanks everybody for coming. I, I guess you're kind of the diehards after two days sticking around for this, but this will be the best panel, right? Right. right? Okay. So um, I'm going to start this off uh, a little bit here, setting some context of what we're going to do, um, what we're going to talk about. There. There's our, there's our panelists. We'll, get, we'll do a quick intro of each panelist, but I want to jump right into some... Um... All right, let's back up. Okay. Um, the, the context I wanted to set here was... Um, CPAS is doing great. It's just booming business. We see incredible use cases. I love the way Musa's uh, talk just ended with those use cases. Um, we see many use cases. Um, but there is a structural problem here. What we're doing is with CPAS is we're selling voice minutes and text messages. There isn't anything more legacy than voice and text. The, the, these markets are in a state of perpetual decline, right? So we're doing a funny thing here. We're wrapping around modern software, great user interfaces, um, coding built around web languages for which we have 10 million developers around the world. But what we're doing with it is using it to better manage some old-fashioned legacy stuff, um, which is declining. So what we want to talk about here is next generation. What is it that we can do with CPaaS that is going to do something new and isn't just rehashing legacy forms of communication and is making this, uh, creating some new kinds of conversations, of interactions, of engagements. So what, what we want to talk about are, are those kinds of things, things that will create revenue, create new revenue, not just take it out of one pocket and put it into another, but new things. And I think we've touched on a number of them uh, over the past day and a half. Contact center, customer engagement, a lot of discussion around that. There's a lot of new things going on there when you think about omni-channel and bots and um, uh, sentiment analysis and all kinds of things we can do there. Think about A-B testing, which channel is most effective for which message to which end user profile, instant ROI on marketing campaigns, how can we improve and refine on that. Um, video is, is an area that is still at early stages but there's a lot of really interesting things you can do with it and, and the infrastructure is already there. Everybody has a camera a good camera, right? That's why everybody's taking pictures of, of, of me right now. <laughs> um, but it, all the infrastructure for, for, is there for video, and there's a lot of opportunity for that. Um, uh, email, this is another interesting one. Not a lot of discussion here on CPaaS, but when you think about email, it plays a vital role in customer experience. I mean, I, I, I'm guessing you're the same as me, but email is your system of record. You buy tickets for an event. You expect to get an email. Your airline ticket comes on email. You're going to get it on your app as well, right? But email is your system of record. You can go back there a week or two weeks later and find it. It's very vital in customer experience. So why not wrap that into the, these models and think about that? So that's one set of, of next-gen topics. The other set is more on the operational side. Um, how do you scale to a million text messages in a day? That's not easy to do that. And there are plenty of use cases that want to do something like that. So scalability. Um, performance. How do we um, know that the performance is good? On voice, where is the problem that affects that MOS score? Is it in the platform, in the cloud? Is it on some transport piece somewhere? Is it in the last mile? We need better granularity into and visibility and monitoring to understand performance issues. And as we move more and more into mainstream um, enterprise applications, that, that becomes a critical piece. Um, security and authentication. Uh, this, is, this is a bigger and bigger deal as we go more and more mainstream. Um, 
Uh, how can we authenticate who's using this? I think um, Andy mentioned uh, the big problem in the US on robocalling, and it's expanding all around the world. Um, it is a huge problem, and that's all about authentication. How do you know who's calling you? How do you know it's a legitimate person? How do we do that? This is something we need to solve here. Um, and then finally, uh, and then I'll stop and we can, we can go to these questions. Finally, um, 5G is coming. This is a whole new world of connectivity that we can run our applications over, customer experience applications, employee experience applications, whatever they are. There's a whole new capability there that's gonna change user expectations for quality. When you have virtually infinite bandwidth anywhere, you, you can do a lot more. So I'd like to understand more, what is, what is the impact of 5G on CPaaS, on the platforms we're building when you think about where 5G is going with the capabilities, the latencies, the densities, um, you think about some of the other, you, we can get into some technical aspects of network slices, creating virtual networks on demand, on the fly when needed. Um, so I'd, it'd be real interesting to he hear how that's going. So, um, so let's start out, and we'd love to get questions from, from the audience too, if, if you have any, but um, I've got plenty, so I, I'm, I'm ready to go here. Let, let's start out maybe on the revenue side. Um, and, um, you, you know, there, there, I, I don't mean to say there's no business for voice and messaging. There is, and there's plenty more to come. Uh, these are, these are multi-tens of billions of dollars of industries. CPAS has got a lot of opportunity there. But, as I say, it's, it's, not, it's kind of old school. So where is the new revenue? Um, maybe we can just go around um, and give us your, your opinion on that. Let's not start with you, because you just, you just talked. Let, let's start at this end. Okay, and, and Alexei, give a little introduction on okay. you and your, your company. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Alexei, I'm CEO and co-founder of Vox Implant. Uh, we are one of the CPaaS players, and we differentiate ourselves as a one true serverless CPaaS on the market. And um, yeah, so answering all your questions about revenues, uh, that's an interesting thing uh, to discuss. Uh, yeah, we all earn a lot of money by augmenting old stuff, like numbers, like connectivity to PSTN, like SMS, but still we can add a lot of value on top of it, and that's what we need to monetize, like not just, you know, mul adding multiplier on top of minutes, multiplier on top of messages. What we need to do is to introduce more useful, reasonable features, it can be machine learning uh, stuff like, you know, these voice bots, right? So we could not build them before. Right now we can. And we can get margin out of it because it's software based, it's in the cloud. It still has cost, costs uh, associated with that because it's kind of, you know, requires a lot of computing power these days. Mm -hmm. But we all know that computing power is just, you know, going, going somewhere <laughs> to space and... To zero. Yeah, to zero. So it's, uh, it's great. And uh, that's where the opportunity is. We need to uh, add smart services and charge for them. And it's, for us, it's just a connectivity. It's, uh, it should be there. It stays there. It will be there for a long, long time, despite 5G, what we can discuss later. Okay. Okay, so we got machine learning, AI, and bots there, something we can do. Okay. You, you got, by the way, you have to come up with different Very examples. Good. Here's That's good. everybody. <laughs> David Walsh, I'm CEO of VoIP Innovations. Um, this is uh, something very dear and near to my heart, uh, especially in terms of uh, selling phone numbers and, and uh, selling SMS and usage, right. et cetera. Um, our company has uh, you know, traditionally been that for the last 14 years, uh, aggregated DIDs all over North America, um, 40 different providers. We are our own provider as well. Uh, up until recently when we acquired Appadays, um, we knew that we needed a program, give that kind of programmability to our, our base of customers. We have over 2,000 MSPs and uh, ITSPs and uh, of different sizes. Um, but we needed to, we realized that not just offering up the APIs to commoditize and, and actually drive more volume, um, we needed to go up market in terms of offering up a plurality of different types of value added services mm -hmm. that our customer base is actually uh, demanding and their customers are demanding. So uh, from a 
you know, we turn to towards a marketplace of different types of services that can be easily activated and associated with their phone numbers. So these could be any kind of point solution that solves a particular kind of pain point. It could be uh, an already a SaaS application mm -hmm. that's uh, built on a monthly recurring revenue. Um, that's you know could be AI chatbots, etc. Um, all within a marketplace that's easily consumable. So that's how we've handled that. Okay. So creating a marketplace. Right. Uh, okay. Mark. Um, so I won't reintroduce myself. Like I got to talk this morning. But what I would say is that um, when it, when it comes to revenue, I tend to think of the the uh, kind of uh, workflow model, which is what part does the the CPaaS portion play in the entire value chain, and. The reality is, is that if you're a component part in the middle of a complete system, then the, you're subject to being replaced. That, that's one thing. So that means you're subject to commoditization, right? Because the endpoints kind of aggregate value and then the middle just acts as a transfer. So that's one reality. The other reality is that there are really only two ways to generate revenue. One is you create a market, and the other is you spin shift in a market. So if the voice and the messaging is declining, then the question is, where is it going? Where is it shifting? And then if you can, if you can go to where it's shifting, kind of like you know, a baseball being thrown towards you, you go to where, it's, where the ball is going, not you know, demanding that it come to you through some magical force, then you can actually um, participate in wherever that revenue goes. So I would say, um, move away from as much as possible being the component, whatever that means, and then look for where the, the revenue is landing and then try to be there before it lands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. I think one place the, the shift is ending, is landing, is with IP messaging. Um, and certainly, you know, we, we've talked about that the past two days, and a lot of CPaaS platforms do that. We'll stitch together various social media sites and communicate customer engagement, et cetera, there. It, it is a complete change in CPaaS. Um, and I think it, it is a very interesting one. It's tiny today. Less than 10% of the business today is, is that. So there is a question of how do you scale that and what does that look like? But let, let's continue on. Thank Benoit, you. Go ahead. Uh, so just for a quick introduction. So my name is Benoit. So I'm the CEO of Oazo. So Wazo is building an open source communication platform. Um, so it's, it's a full open source project. And on top of it, we build solutions for enterprises and operators uh, on the unified communication and the CPaaS market. Um, so to, to get to your question related to the revenue. Uh, first, our mission is more to, to help our customers save money because we think there are some, some room for commodity on the market. Mm. There are some places that are pretty mature and we think open source can help achieve that. And then on the revenue side, we think that we can create more revenue with more value for the customers. And so to create that value, I think I agree with the, the marketplace part. And I guess the ecosystem will be key for all the providers in order to increase the value and the experience that they provide to their mm to their customers. Mm -hmm. And so I guess building an incredible ecosystem in different fields, because we talk about AI and so on and so on, but I guess there are some business tools that need to be integrated with CPaaS, and there are a lot of you know, legacy tools that we could integrate it before thinking about the future, the AI, the bots, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay, we, we definitely want to come back to that. How do we make the existing infrastructure better I want to talk about that on the scalability, reliability, performance issues. But let's go on, Musa. Okay, your, so your chance will, to come I will, back. I will, yeah, thank you very much. I yeah. will not introduce myself again. But to me, where the value is, is not really a technical discussion, because this technical discussion might be a short-term discussion. If you take the SMS, today I can send you SMS through my contract, and it's for free, it's embedded. But once I get an SMS for my bank authentication, this is, this is costing uh, a lot, and there is some money to do that. So coming back to my point about being relevant and being contextual, the SMS here is sent in a very specific context. Um, then if you talk about technology, as I was mentioning before, the value is, and it is true for 
every domain is where we do the interface between one world and an, another world. Between, like I was mentioning, the WebRTC world and the PSTN world. This is where we have some values because we have people that are still using this and other people are using that and you need to put them together. Um, but at the end of the day, as I was mentioning, the value will be where we will help our customers either to win some money or to prevent from losing money. So it could be cost of total cost of ownership decrease. It could be operation uh, hiding and, and hiding the complexity of operation thanks to the integration with existing systems and applications. Okay. I, think it's, I think that's it. Okay, good. Um, so l let's stick with this theme of, of new revenue. Um, uh, the, you know, what, what CPaaS does is it's software. Right? So the value is in the software. The value is not in the voice and the, the voice minutes and the message, the text message. The value is in this software. Right? Because it's modern software, it's, it's easier to use, you don't have to worry about all that just bizarre signaling systems in the network. Anybody who's been around the signaling system seven and all those crazy things with a thousand network interconnects around the world. So the value's in the software, so how do we use that software to, to create more value, right? That's, that's what we're talking about here. Um, and you know, if we think about this, this, um, the scenarios around customer experience um, that are driving a lot of the use cases today, what else can we do right, with that software besides just have good connectivity into fixed and mobile operators all around the world? Um, you know, can we, your point about you send an SMS to authenticate an account, can you turn that into a conversation? Can you create a relationship out of that by leveraging that information? Um, I, I'm, I'm controlling this with the microphone. I think, I think it's exactly uh, the case when we mentioned that you have to put bridges between different medias and services. Once you start an SMS, then you can use that SMS to interface and create a conversation to get an account and jump into something else. But the challenge is how easy it has to be done. Which process I have to go through as a user to make it, to have it as, uh, as seamless as possible. And make things sim simple, you, we all know that it's very complicated, but again, this is where the value is. Uh, exactly what you said, starting from an SMS, which is something that everyone knows, simple, but jump into something else, making this interface thanks to the CPaaS capabilities and the software. Mm -hmm. Any other? Thoughts on this, how, how, how to leverage that software platform to do more than connect texts and phone calls um, and add value that, you know, I, I'm trying to find, you know, tangible value where you could pr price it higher, charge more than a tenth of a penny to terminate a message or... Uh, yeah, for example, on our side, we don't sell the minutes. We sell actually the software. You sell the software. So on our side, the value that we are trying to give back to the customer, it's the control over, over what they are building. And the control, you can see it as something really defensive, you know, and the cost or on the governance. But the control for our customer, it's more than that. It's a control of the quality of the services that they are deploying, getting closer to, yet to, the, to their users, building better contextual and customer experience, all those things that can be achieved if you control your stack, if you understand it, and if you use the latest technology to build it and make it scale. So, you know, we are seeing a lot of our customers that are going from Trilio to come back to something where they can actually have that value in-house or in a cloud or wherever they want, but to be able to understand it and control it. So mm -hmm. the key word for me will be the, the control on that question. Okay. So, so Okay, we'll come back to that. Um, I think, Mar uh, Dave, yeah, yeah. Did you, you had a comment. I was just going to say, you know, adding revenue to, you know, an already, you know, a minute or an SMS, yeah. um, you know, from a contextual perspective, you, you tie AI type applications to it, um, develop that conversation, um, and develop that relationship with the end user, and it, you know, it always comes down to, to end user experience anyway. Um, and if they're getting value from that experience, then they're going to obviously pay more for it. So that's, yeah. that's where I was yeah. going with that one. Yeah, okay. Go ahead. I, I can just uh, probably tell about one example here, right? So yeah. we all discuss an SMS, uh, bots, AI. So let's say there is a product from Google Dialogflow, and it has its like session internally uh, when you start communicating with it. So I can make a call, start talking with a bot, 
And at some point, uh, there is some input required from me which is complicated to say and recognize. And it's like, you know, it can send me an SMS and answer me some ID or something. So it's still a call, it's still an SMS, but the flow itself, it, you know, it's different. So we got a lot of value on top of it and we combining all this stuff and we can charge for the new, completely new use case, right? So, and that's where uh, these new things like bots, ML, and AI make sense. So it's again about user experience, you are right, absolutely. If users don't like it, they won't yeah. use it. But yeah. there are some reasonable use cases. Yeah, I mean, t today, mostly bots and AI are used in that context for really simple, routine calls, and you're offloading a live agent. Uh, how do I reset my password? Or, you know, I forgot my, you know, something really simple. What you're describing is more complex. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Right. But it's reasonable because, you know, uh, yes. It's about combining channels, right? So before we used either phone or messaging, and right now we can roam between those, yeah. and depending on the use case. So uh, we have our technology restrictions even in speech recognition still. You know, it's, it's, it's already very good, but not like 100%. So if it asks me something very important and I should answer with 100% accuracy, I can't rely on speech recognition. And that's where it can send me either SMS or send me a message in Facebook or I, on WhatsApp, and we can you know, answer there and continue our conversation on a phone line. And that's what not possible before. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Maybe one, uh, one adjacent, maybe one adjacent revenue we have to look at is all. It's not technical. It's not related to CPaaS as a technical platform, but it's related to the services that we can have in parallel. Once we talk about CPaaS, we, we can talk about integration. So we need to have people being able to do that and to be to invoice. Coming back to the business thing, mm -hmm. it could be also about uh, customer success management. And how can you accompany your customers into a transformation? So I think that with the CPaaS, we have a a lot of opportunities that are related to the services that we can uh, bring in parallel to the technical integration itself. Mm -hmm. It could be training, again, customer success management, uh, change management, these kind of things. And we see that from the market, right? We see some customers saying, I would like to go there, but who, who can help us? And we are ready to pay. So I think it's significant. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if, um, if there's a vendor who'd be willing to do a contract that says they'll get paid based on an improvement in customer satisfaction. Yeah, this is the outcome-based services. Instead of a voice message or a text message flow, right? This, this could be done, for example, in, ho in hotels where you, you can invoice only if the room is, if there is someone in the room. So, you know, this is probably what you are saying is linked to outcome-based services, meaning yeah. you pay really for the benefits you can, you can yourself as a customer measure. Right, yeah. right, yeah. So I used to run a corporate strategy at Avaya, and I actually tried that. So um, it turns out that when you're selling contact centers, I knew I would get a, uh, yeah. a barrier. When on you're that telling, one. when you're selling contact center solutions, what you're actually selling is a product that your customer does not want, because <laughs> it indicates that your product is screwed up. Right. And so the more uh, you know people calling in, it just tells you that the product side of your shop is broken. So everybody hates to buy contact center stuff because it's stuff that they think that they shouldn't have to buy. So I went in there and said, hey, okay, guess what? I'll tell you what, what are you spending right now on product? And I ran this calculation and said, <clears throat> okay, look, if we can make changes to all of these meaningless NPS scores, can we, um, you, you pay us more, right? And no, <laughs> not at all. And um, so it turns out that even though they don't want it, they don't necessarily use everything in it, they believe that they shouldn't have to buy it, and they think that um, it's too expensive that they will actually um, really not benefit from where it can take them. And um, it's a very difficult proposition because people are not believing that this is something that they even need in the first place. Mm -hmm. So uh, what I would argue is that if you can take, let's say, the, all of the SMS and convert them into some kind of signal that you can feed back into the rest of your organization, then you can add intelligence just on the activity itself, not even what's embedded in it. So that could be interesting um, as a business service, but, but, uh, the, but the thing remains a, remains a commodity in that context, but if you, if you kind of put it, look at it in mass, then maybe you can add something else to it. But that takes a very um, uh, introspective customer to do that. Introspective, yeah, yeah. I mean, th th this is viewed in a, in a cost-conscious way, right? Not a strategic way. 
Right, if they're strategic, if they're, they're really trying to fundamentally digitally transform, they may think of this not as a cost criteria, but yeah, okay. Um, anything else so we could say, that, are, that are revenue drivers here? I mean, IP messaging, I mean, I, I kind of like that one because it's a different model, right? You're not paying the carriers for minutes and transit and, and messages. Um, you, you know, Facebook and WhatsApp are gonna create their commercial terms, but it's a completely different model. So shouldn't pricing change? Shouldn't CPAS pricing change? I mean, right now it's based on minutes and, and messages. As we use more and more IP messaging in the mix, it's IP, it's all IP. We shouldn't have this silly per minute per text message anymore, that's old school. So how are we gonna do that? Well, there's actually a model where you could charge Facebook for the messages that you're sending through them. Because what they want is they want a closed loop system on all the data they get on the users. So they get the data and that's their value. They get their, the data because it's more valuable and then they can sell it. So if I'm sending messages on Facebook Messenger, a million messages a day, my view is they should be paying me to put that traffic on their network. And um, of course, that's not their view. Right. But, right. Um, yeah. but if I showed up with a billion a day, then it's a different discussion. So it's really a function of who, who has um, you know, strategic advantage in that scenario. Yeah. And right now, if you're sending a couple thousand a day, you have nothing, mm -hmm. and your customers are all using Facebook. But there are scenarios where that can change, and I think is if you take all these components and you link them together, and suddenly you're hitting them multiple times, and you're, you're effectively closing the loop on their customer profile, then you can argue perhaps for something, but it, it, takes a, it takes a lot, and those guys scale. are vicious. That's exactly right, yeah. I mean, like the, the traditional peering, basically. It's like peer. peering, yeah. yeah. It's peering. If you're big, you're you, gonna have. You're upstream, uh, you know, peer, you dump it, they pay you, um, but then you gotta negotiate. <laughs> yeah, in terms of uh, IP messaging, it's not only about messaging. Messaging is a good example, but we got WebRTC for many years already, so you can do peer-to-peer -peer calls, and when you try to sell people peer-to-peer -peer calls using minute-based pricing, they will look at you like, what? It's like data, and it's even can be peer-to-peer, -peer, right? Yeah. So you will probably need turn server somewhere in the middle. You will pay something for traffic. But it's like uh, you should deploy new models, which are like you know monthly active users. I don't know, maybe some data transfer going through your nodes or Amazon, whatever. But when it comes to minutes or messages, it's like, Hey man, it won't work. They, and the big problem yeah. actually with that pricing is that many companies can't understand how much they will be paying you depending on their scale. It's right. the same issue with so Amazon. They can't budget. They can't yeah. budget for it. Right? Yeah, it's really hard to predict. So I'm yeah. sitting like, I will have one user. He will be doing some number of messages, calls, video calls, but I have no idea how many. And it's really hard for them to, yeah. you know, figure it out. Yeah, Th this is a real problem. I mean, we tried to, to build a model where it would be based on APIs, number of API transactions. Yeah. But it's impossible. How many APIs does it take to make a phone call? Nobody knows. Nobody thinks about that. So, so uh, yeah, we do, all right, but nobody else does. But I think the, there's partly an education here. How would we shift away from minutes and messages? because everybody thinks about it that way. All the buyers think about it that way. Right? And f for sure we agree that there is tons of value in messaging. That, and in messaging for like multiple channel of communication, in, we are seeing in the, in the contact center space that people want to move more as the first discussion as a, as a messaging discussion uh, because it's easier to manage for yeah. sure. Yeah. And, and that's an internal discussion that we are having on how to price something that makes sense on the IP messaging part. And we come up with an idea, for example, that we are testing on the market related to actually the value that it's bringing to the customer and the value it's the conversation. So an open conversation can be a metric for us to measure how to price that, that part. Yeah. Because it, it's actually, it's the IP messaging, it's not one message that is valuable for the customer or for 
the end user. It's, it's that conversation that is created between the contact center and the end user that is valuable. So right. probably the conversation could, could be a metric. Yeah, and, and it could be as, as these conversations use multiple channels, like it starts at text, escalates to you know, a voice call, maybe escalates again to a video or to a conference call. You could price the whole thing this conversation for this price, right, rather than count each minute or session or whatever. There is another point, actually, probably that could be interesting, is that you can erase the, the value of the IP messaging just by providing more security and, uh, and confidentiality. What, I give you one example. We have some customers like policemen or even hospitals that have very critical data. So, you know when you say it is patient data, and they're still using WhatsApp, which is directly connected to Facebook. It's a it's, disaster, It's right? not the best yeah. way of, of exchanging right. you know, patient data. So right. if you come up with something that is bringing security and you guarantee that the data is remaining in a specific place, in a country, and so on, so there is value there. And the second value, the second value might be also something we can see in, uh, in APAC, where you have WeChat. WeChat is not only an instant message, it's a hub of a lot of applications, right. and the first of them is the payment, payment. Uh, thing. You pay everything. And then you can charge not on the instant message, but on the payment capabilities that you provide there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, let, let's go on to some of these, um, these operational issues. Um, uh, let's start with this, this point of scalability. I think this is a problem that we ha have today with CPaaS, that it just can't scale. Um, uh, many of the platforms were built uh, earlier days, maybe not the latest architecture, maybe, maybe you guys, Wazoo, and, and want to dispute what you're doing on that, but um, you know, we are seeing massive scale for some of these use cases now, and there are limitations. Um, so what, how can that improve? What, what do we need to do there? And, well, I gave the example. How can I send a million text messages a day? Or how can I, let me put it another way. How can I send 10,000 a minute? What is your activity? What do you want to do? I, I I've heard these uses, they're real. Like a bank may want, you know, think of a large bank that's sending out notices to cardholders. We just got hacked and somebody stole your ad. They got, you know, and, and they're critical. They have to get there. Um, so most systems can't do that today. Yeah, but it's not a problem of CPaaS vendors in general. So basically, our software can be scaled. It's more like we got this legacy interop problem with yeah. SMS gateways and uh, telcos. And yes, it's not a, like a cloud. Telephony is different. So you have these channels. You have some restrictions, limitations, and you can overcome them really fast if you, you know, if scale is growing. Yeah, yeah uh, so the mobile operators will limit how many you can send in your system. But if you're the smart software CPaaS guy, you should be able to do multi, absolutely. you know, multi-operator to manage those thresholds. Yeah, right? Uh, right? yeah, but you know, there are cases which probably not super interesting for operators, but still can be useful for our customers in CPaaS. Let's say you got this authentication calls instead of SMS, which should not be actually connected. So operators don't earn money on calls which are not connected. And you can send like thousands of these calls to them and they will consider it as a spam or something. So right. they will bro block your traffic. But it's a real use case, it works. You got these four digits, five digits in the end, you're entering them, or it's even automatically in Android can be like, you know, uh, taken from caller ID and do this two-factor out thing. But they are not happy about it because you're actually utilizing their capacity. And uh, even if we're using more than one, and you know, everybody's using more than one, we got like, yeah, some, some, some guys have thousands, <laughs> it's still limited. It's, it's not something you can scale immediately. They usually say, okay, we got like 500 lines, 1,000 lines for you available. If you need more, let us know. We will do that, but it will take time. So what yeah, that, you need to do is to have a, some, I don't know, prediction system which will help you with that. But let's say we sign up some startup which became, I don't know, overnight super successful and everybody wants to be a customer, user, whatever. And it, you can't predict this. It's like just going and it is going down, not mm -hmm. because of CPaaS backend, but because it can you know, send all these calls or SMS or whatever to PSTN or 
legacy network. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But still, I would argue CPAS is supposed to overcome the limitations in the old manual telephony systems of number management, provisioning, ordering. Well, I would argue as a, right. as a technical system, it probably does. But if you have a scenario where, let's say, at the University of Texas, you have 50,000 students that need to be notified of some kind of emergency situation in one minute, what happens, and this is actually a real case, is that in four minutes, it was over. 20 minutes later, people were getting notifications. Because, and it wasn't because it was a CPAS problem, it was because there, were, there was a tower um, constraint issue with the number of connections that could be made with all of those phones, and they were trying to jam um, common services over these same uh, signal pipes. So if you think about it in terms of physical sense. So it's, it was a actually a physical infrastructure problem had nothing to do with the kind of digital tech underlying. It was all this other stuff. And so what happens is that we just build to the lowest common denominator and let the high end break. And unfortunately what happens is that it, it can affect people. And yeah. so, um, you know, that's a significant problem. I, I had a, <laughs> one of my first systems that I built. Turns out Sony got, a, got an account on one of my systems. And what they were doing, this was back in like 2004 or five or something like that. And they were, they were texting everybody, like Chris, Chris Brown, is that his name, the singer? Chris Brown's new single, they had loaded into my system. And so I'd have 40,000 people call in like two minutes. And um, we're like, what? What's going on? So we had to build a system that would kind of spawn new systems. But so we spent a year working on this one account. They paid us like $14 a month. It was ridiculous. So, um, but you know, we were nerdy at the time, so it worked out. But I think people tend to, to design for the low end yeah. and not for the high yeah. end. Well, I, I guess one thing in the, in the example you gave of the, the University of Texas, yeah, it's out of the control of wherever the, the, the originating platform is. But I guess, um, are the, uh, how, how, do, how do they, di you know, I'm not asking for this, but how do you do that diagnosis, right? Is that something that CPAS could do? Could they have agents, pro and they can do the, where's the problem? Number one, it's not us, right? That's the first, it's not us, guys. They'll think it's them because, you know, they, they, that's who they're paying, but help the end customer diagnose where it is, where is the issue? And that's a dramatic one, that universe, but there's plenty of gray outs that happen that can be very meaningful um, for enterprises and they want to know, think about capacity planning, et cetera. So the more I think that, that the, the CPAS can, can do to extend visibility, monitoring, at different legs of that session, voice, text, whatever it is, could be a real value add there. Maybe 5G. <coughs> 5G. <laughs> So we have to wait for 5G. Okay. To, to give you uh, my view on the scalability part. 6G. <laughs> okay, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah no worries. Um, yeah. So for the scalability, we can see it in, in, in different ways. So for us, we have the scalability on the, the infrastructure part. Uh, and for that, our answer basically is to use the most relevant technology that can help our users to scale. So. We use OpenStack, we use Kubernetes, we use Ansible for automation, and so on and so on. And then there is another point that is related to the, the connection that you will build with the, with the carrier. Um, and to that extent, we are trying to build as many interconnection points for them to be able to have a right coverage, depending on the case. But on our side, we don't have the same issue that a, a pure CPaaS player can see, because at the end of the day, we pretty much know like the size of our customers' needs. So yeah. we, we don't have yeah. the same scaling issue, even if we have like one customer in the emergency space where they have a huge peak of activity, uh, but we design the architecture to be able to handle that. Yeah. So actually we okay. don't build for the minimum denominators, but it's more for the maximum one initial. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, w one other dimension of this operations and performance is around some of the requirements uh, like emergency calling E911 in the US, I think it's 211 calling here, or in UK, anyhow? 112, 112. Um, wh what's been really interesting in the US, and, and I, you know, I think it's around the world, as enterprises shift their communications workloads to the cloud, 
you know, and Microsoft is telling them you gotta do this and Cisco and everything. And they say, okay, great, we'll do it. And then, you know, they turn it on and activate it and then a day or two after that, an employee, there's a fire and they call 911, it doesn't work. Because Microsoft Skype for Business or Teams doesn't support 911. Or at best, they dial 911, they get a Microsoft call center agent who answers, oh, you got a fire? Where are you? I'll call your local police department for your fire department. This is unintended consequences, right? So I'm just, the point is that um, um, this goes to ha having that kind of capability in the underlying software that will plug right into the, the PSAPs and all those things that make 911 work seamlessly in, in the, the legacy networks, but it ha hasn't been that common in these software networks. Just a remark on that one. I think that talking about the operation and the scalability thing, which is related, yeah. um, so either we just predict that we will have a capability to handle 10 times the current amount of users or whatever, and at the end of the day, we end up with a cost issue. So in order to make sure that we will be able to handle an in a dramatic increase, we have to put money, and it's not cheap, right? So the thing is that more than a technical thing, uh, it is um, a business or a financial oh, yeah. thing. So we have to have some mechanism to do two things, in my opinion. First of all, to make sure that we will be able to be elastic very quickly in our capabilities. Uh, this is probably using, uh, I, I'm relaying on my R&D guys behind, so I'm just repeating what they said to me, uh, like serverless type of technology, probably, this is what you have said also before. And also probably, uh, this is where we have to put some artificial intelligence there to prioritize some messages or some flows. I'll give you one example. In our platform, we have some critical customers and we detect when something is going wrong but uh, we used to have it in the global inf information flow. So we, our operation teams were, were used to, to manage that as yet another company, but this company was critical. So what we did is that we tagged that company as critical so that if something happens, we put it up and we, we have some kind of prioritization of messages, operation support. So at the end of the day, again, it's about contextual, and I think it's the purpose of this event, and how we could put these things um, intelligent enough to make sure that the, the, the more critical comes up and then we can manage. Mm -hmm. So it's cost and relevance thing again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, we've got a couple of minutes left. I don't know if there's any questions from anybody. Yeah. Luis has a question. You want this? Uh... <laughs> yeah, I was I was thinking about. Uh, okay, about the question about the emergency and so on, and thinking about Twilio having acquired SendGrid, so nobody mentioned email, like if there is a problem, you, you can still send an email and you have no scalability problems. And also thinking that uh, all this, uh, there is voice, there are bots, there are messenger, but email is still there, you know, like, that's a little bit what Twilio showed yesterday. Like it's really, the, 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 the rule is omni-channel, you know. Like for instance, if I have a free Slack account, I can do an email integration and get my emails on Slack, so I will get my notification <laughs> directly, uh, you know. And all the people sitting on the panel, I have talked with them in the last days. Uh, we've communicated by SMS, by WhatsApp, by Slack, by Messenger, so that, that's it, you know. So right. the, 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 the key for me is really like integration. You know? so yeah, well, you know, integration. The, in, in telecommunications, we never throw anything away. We keep all the channels. We may not use them as much, but we keep them all, but we keep adding new ones. So Email every one cool. of us is a system integrator. There is a question. Oh, They're right behind you. <laughs> Um, maybe one comment to outcome-based pricing. I think it's not even that far away. Even telcos are looking at that in context of RBM. So it's not RCS classically, person to person, but in RBM, uh, you would price uh, messages, individual messages differently than you would price sessions, 
where you have interactions. It's not yet outcome-based, where you say you could price transaction, you could do in a more interactive channel, but at least yeah. even telcos, um, for even one of their legacy channels, are looking into that based on the value uh, you know, one direction creates versus the value you get when you have uh, turned a PTA message into, also, uh, sorry, A2P message into PTA um, kind of interaction. So mm -hmm. I think it's, maybe this is the first step at least carriers will do, but I see this kind of as a, as a, as a potential thing that not RCS is, or RBM as such enables, but that will maybe also um, um, yeah, make them think about offering uh, more than just volume-based pricing. That's pretty good, and he works for Deutsche Telekom, too. <laughs> That's really good. Okay. Also, uh, talking about, about the value is what, what companies have been doing in, like, in the call center space for years is, is segmenting customers and basically like, yeah. taking away the cost from the low-value customers and, and just, yeah, okay, it's like a cutoff of like, I'm, my value is this and this, and I allocate like a little, uh, that's where it fits in, you know? Yeah. Like if, if you, you put, invest in all these softwares and infrastructures, uh, the value must come from somewhere, I mean, from the customer pocket, not from nowhere. Good, well that's great, we just, we just turned red here. Uh -oh. It's a little striking up here, that means we're out of time. But thank you everybody, this is a great panel. Thanks a lot.